Okay. You have the carburetor on. And silly me didn't video the process. Um, next time I will. But there's a couple of things that you really have to pay attention to, and I'm hoping I can show this in the video. One, right there is the fuel line. You'll see where it goes into the carburetor. I'm hoping you can see that. There's that brass. But there's actually a, a place for that fuel line to sit. And it's clipped in right there. It's not a clip. It's just a spot for it to sit. It's a place in the plastic where they put a, a slot to hold that fuel line. And it goes behind the uh, plastic bracket which holds the throttle cable. So that fuel line comes up, goes around behind this piece, then comes back through, sits in there, then goes to the carburetor. Very important. Okay, second thing is this pair of rubber um, lines come up out of the tank. This is for the purge system. And the short one goes here, obviously, but there's a series of places. You can see where it goes up and over and then ultimately into the bottom of these two uh, two spots on the purge bulb and then a short line goes from the purge bulb around to to the carburetor. I don't know if you can see that. There's a brass fitting there. That goes and loops around and goes into the the purge uh, bulb. Um, but there's a couple of like little plastic pins which align the carburetor and you'll see them on the manifold. You'll see them and what else? Another detail. If you look very closely down here you've got the choke. Well there's a spring that goes underneath the choke lever. The spring is on the control and it goes underneath that lever which actually flips the choke on. Um, what else? Yeah, do the best you can with that mess. This was a pain in the ass, but this right here actually clips. Let me see if I can get a better angle. This bracket right there actually snaps back onto the, the carburetor. Okay. You know, it means you can unsnap it and pull it out some and get to the plug. It's not easy. Maybe this is a better shot of that spring right down there where I'm pointing. It goes underneath this. And of course, just like a 350s, you've got these rubber mounts. Yeah, I kept wanting to put this rubber to the outside of the plastic, but I don't believe it does. I believe it sits right where it is. That's where it fits best. So it pushes from the back. Um, mine was missing this anti-vibe, so I replaced that. What else? Um, you can see down there where the plug ends up sitting. You got to snap that in too. There's a bracket that snaps right into. You know, figure if I give you a good view of the carburetor mounting points you can do the same thing I did kind of work your way through it yeah that might be a better shot of the fuel line see how it goes in behind okay I think we're gonna button up this saw and see if we can get to fire you know what I've been Doing some research on the on the whole uh, auto tune and all that, and it's fairly limited in what it can do. You know, I don't know if I should be disappointed or not. Uh, it's, I guess it's what I expected. Um, at this point in its evolution, it really doesn't give the user much control. You really have to uh, bring it to the dealer. Even they don't have that much control. It's really set by the factory and they get their 
firmware revisions and basically what they do is they use that system to go and uh, install it to that particular chip but you don't have a lot of control not sure how I feel about it yet my instinct is well you probably know what my instinct is you know if you like to tinker it takes away that whole tuning thing you just really can't do much with it these are really nice saws you know one thing you gotta give credit one like I said before the linkage on the Husqvarna auto tunes is a lot better than the, their competitor a whole lot better I'm not going to dwell on it but it really is um, also the anti vibe on this saw is really nice it's a very smooth saw all these 55s as well you know in terms of ergonomics they've done a good job the reliability well I think that's to be determined. I think what it is, is when they figure out the right mapping and give it enough fuel, these things will last a long time. But I think they've been pushing the edge on trying to make them EPA clean. And I think uh, as users, we suffered a little bit because they pushed the edge a little bit too far. And I think that's what those upgrades are about. And Well, they're not fooling around with that air filter arrangement, are they? Get that back some. I'll tell you what, putting on the carburetor, this was absolutely essential. That wasn't too hard. Those were in there really tight when I took it out. Makes me nervous. I'll make them firm. I'm not going to make them that crazy tight. Okay. To collaborate a little bit on what I was saying about the carburetor and uh, fuel lines, just information cable. This one here is the fuel line. It goes up and has to go kind of like that. And these two here are the purge circuit is what they are. So just so you have a look at where they all come from. Should you need a reference, which I doubt you will. So just observe. Just raw information. Um, the other thing is, this goes in here, like that. Can't forget that. You know, 372s have their own deal just like that. I just can't tell you how many times I have lost those things. They vibrate out, you know. Of course, I made all this big deal about putting in the uh, screen muffler. Might as well do it, huh? When you're looking at the pile of screws that you might have left over from doing a project like this. Um, on this saw here, there's going to be three small screws. One that ties down that uh, series of ignition wires. Two on the plate over here, uh, the guide plate uh, cover up the oil pump and stuff on this side, and three this one. And this one here is the only one that's a fine thread. The other two look like this. 
underneath there and right there. Those two, this plate right here. So when you start looking at your stuff, can't figure out where things go, just remember that. Yeah. Coarse thread. Phillips head. And it's the same thread as the one that is stuck into the ignition wires. So we're getting pretty close to putting this thing on and giving it a trial run. That's right, it's this goofy ass thing. Like that. Damn. Let's see how complex we can make this thing. I left that loose so I could figure it out. More trivia. These two long screws are the ones that go in here. These two short screws go underneath. So let's get it on this side here first. And this is another deal where you want you don't want to really want to get hyper aggressive putting these in. You you need to to be a little bit cognizant of the fact that they're going into plastic. I think when I put on the EL48 carb this upcoming week um, I'll add an addendum to this video on how to change carburetors because that's what we're going to have to do. Change carburetors. having to use my other and it's still out in the garage though my other t-handle for this one pooling engineers must have uh, got some listen time all right mainly together the other thing to notice is on the spark plug there's a channel for it to go up through too pretty much everything is well thought out that way very I mean very well detailed from that perspective if you like that kind of thing well let's start out before we get too excited and just do a spark check yes we do have spark I don't know Let's see if you can see that. See if we have, I'll try to hold it this way. Plenty of spark. Now, see if that goofy uh, carburetor will do anything. Now remember, I still have the, the EL46 on here. That was a healthy spark. I'm good with that. All right, so there's a spark plug. Jeez, I don't like how close that is there. OK, 
God, I wonder if that ever is a problem. Cover on. You know, it's not like old saws where there's a reason to pull the cover off because you can't do a damn thing to this thing. Not pouring out. Let's see if it pumps up. Yeah, pumps up. It means the carburetor now has fuel. Let's see if it'll fire. Well guys, that's a very healthy sounding saw. I'm very, very surprised. Now I don't know what to do. Huh. Let's see if it restarts. We have chainsaw. So, Bob's coming up tomorrow. I need to put a bar and chain on this to run it. Um, I'm not sure I want to put a brand new bar and chain on it, but I can borrow a bar and chain from one of my other saws. So, this one here is 18 inch dot 058 or 1.5 millimeter, 3 8 68 drive lengths. I have those. 68 drive length, 3 8 that 058 or 1.5 millimeter. That's what I gotta do. I gotta put a brand new bar and chain on it to run it tomorrow. I'm gonna get this part out of the way pretty quick. Just wanna do a couple of test cuts. And we have some firewood saws and we have this uh, 562 that has been brought back from the dead. This will be its second cut in the woods. That's the dead saw. What I want to do is run it for a while and then uh, do another test cut on that same log. See if it changes.
a nice little saw. This one here is an old steel uh, O21. It's only 35 cc's, but it's also typical of a homeowner's firewood saw. So we keep talking about firewood operations, let's just do exactly that. So we got that pile bucked up, you know, this is sort of a, the end of the day kind of thing. And uh, I got probably a tank through the 562. The interesting thing that Bob pointed out is after the camera turned off and a couple minutes went by, guess what, we all, we both went back to the 562s. So I guess that uh, unfortunately pretty much answers the question, doesn't it, given all those saws and the choices which one would you run 
I guess at some level action speaks louder than words, doesn't it? So I want to take another test cut now that the saw's got some time and the chain's got some time too, so I don't know whether it's going to show us anything, but... successful build to this point. We have to do some durability testing and I will eventually put an EL48 carb on it but for now let's just give it some time with the EL46 and see what happens. So until next time <laughs>